morning y'all wiggle here june something teenth thursday mid morning 8 30 maybe so what i'm working on today is uh this mess so this is my peppers and tomatoes that got put in I put the three sisters in there. I know it's late. It's way late. It's at least three, four weeks late at being generous. So what I have um, in that middle row was two rows that we didn't do anything with. And it was like, you know, I was gone for six weeks. So um, this was all tarped to choke out the weeds. Uh, I didn't have enough tarps. So that's why that, that was all grass. We weeded it, chopped it and so forth over there. The uh, tarp blew back, so we have that little triangle there. We're covering up grass that grew. I find it's just easier to go ahead and tarp it and wait than trying to force everything and trying to hurry. Now here's my Osage orange along the road there. I also put in a sunflower. Comfrey and some uh, black locust. This I didn't let the cattle in on. This I had another corner like this I did let the cattle in on. So uh, anyway, these two rows in the middle is what I'm working on. Um, I'm gonna be putting an air conditioner in my greenhouse office today. If you want to see that later, and I'm also going to be working on the off-grid meat locker generating ice with solar power then I'm going to try to use the ice to cool the meat cooler ice blocks so check that out if you're interested right now we're getting got the bucket over here what we're doing now is hacking down this you know it's kind of too thick to weed eat you could put a brush blade on there but and you could use a sickle, but I'm just using a machete. And we're sorting it between edible and non-edible. I'm going to leave the non-edible weeds as um, compost. And the edible weeds, we're going to get composted much more quickly by giving them to the cows. So... Here's my potato patch here, and it does have weeds and stuff coming up in it. it hasn't been tended to. Here's the two rows in the middle that are worthless at this point. I'm going to chop them, weed eat it, and then tarp it. So what I'm dealing with here is I want to let you know that while this looks, this four foot tall, five foot tall stuff looks incredibly wasteful and neglectful. Weeds have a great value in that. Now I will say this dirt's pretty fertile already. So this stuff all just popped up on its own. But it, what it's doing is deep rooted. It's getting down there in the subsoil, the clay, the red clay, pulling up nutrients, putting it on the leaves, making it available if it's edible, and then it's just building biomass if it's inedible. So various strategies of plants this time of year are to be very deep rooted and stocky stemmy and then they have various defense mechanisms to keep from getting grazed down this is secession in in uh, progress the dirt's already so fairly fairly fertile so the bigger weeds are coming in choking out the grass i mean some of the, the bermudas in there and so forth but it's 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 jumping right past the grass stage into the stocky herbaceous stage and these stocky herbaceous you know warm weather plants that just grow like crazy they're not your enemy they're your friend so let me explain to you the lamb's quarter highly edible one of the most nutritious greens that we can eat so this is something you need to know about and eat for yourself its strategy is to just seed itself like crazy, to grow like crazy and throw seeds. Similarly, ragweed is uh, 
actually it's a, one of the highest producing edible oil plants there is if you want to get the ragweed seeds and press them it makes a lot of oil I've never done it I just know you can do it again it tries to grow quickly and be very seedy now the spiny amaranth here highly nutritious but it's barbed wire so the cattle will pick at it but they don't eat it all the way down because it's got uh, spikes all over it's down barbs thorns I forgot the name of this thing but it's poisonous we don't get too many of them here but it grows really quickly its strategy is to grow quickly and to be poisonous which leaves it inedible to all livestock similarly the common cockle burr here see the you know, purple lines on it, purple spots poisonous it can be to everybody the cows don't eat it people don't eat it there is some red red root, um, you know, pigweed, just regular amaranth, highly nutritious as well. But the bugs usually eat it up here. We don't really get a chance at it. That is something the cows will eat. And over here is local weed, highly poisonous. That really tall thing with the leaves, that thing grows like crazy too. It stinks when you cut it. You can't mistake it. It is very poisonous. Local weed. If you eat it, it will make you have hallucinations like craziness. I think that's mostly what we have here. So what I'm doing is sorting the spiny amaranth. I'm putting it in the edible pile. Definitely the lamb's quarter in the edible pile. The pigweed and animals love ragweed. So that's all going in the edible pile. Not a whole lot else here. So I'm just, that's the inedible pile there. And this is the edible pile over here. So we're going to load that up into the bucket and take it over to feed the cows today. So this can be seen as a huge nuisance or it can be seen as a resource. So it is a fodder resource and it is a ground cover, a mulch, stow it down and that stuff's fairly persistent. So you make a pile of that, it'll pretty much stop the weeds. It takes a little bit longer to break down. But it's bringing up, this is, all of this is not from your topsoil. A lot of this growth is from your subsoil. It's changing your subsoil into valuable asset. So it can be fertilizer one way or another. Um, I'm going to get in here between the potato rows. There are rows in there, believe it or not. And we'll be weeding out some of this other. I don't. It's already going to seed. We don't want to drop in much seed. It's going to be not pleasant. Oh, I was going to say we're out here trying to beat the heat, but the sun's already got over that tree. So I'm trying to beat. We're going to just finish these two rows. Um, one way I'm beating the heat today: polyester and trying to beat the bugs, chiggers, ticks, and all that stuff that bites you. Polyester and long sleeve white. It's fairly breathable, but it definitely helps keep the bugs off. I'm using welding gloves, not the ones that are insulated, just regular. I'm giving them to my helper. That's why I'm only wearing this regular glove here. To help keep the bugs from getting down your sleeves and stuff. And then muck boots. And I'm wearing polyester sweatpants. <laughs> and definitely want to have white on. And you want to have yourself... Again, this is... Um, not the greatest hat, it's a little bit heavy. I like the straw hat, but I gave it to my helper. So you want to wear white, long sleeve to keep the bugs off you. So we're going to get this all chopped and I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. So uh, just wiggle out for now. So the bucket is pretty much full. Going to have to go empty it and come back. Here's the poisonous stuff along the edge of the potatoes here. Now it's serving excellently as a weed mulch, but it, then it will turn into compost. Now you could take it over and give it to the cows. They're not going to eat it. They'll just avoid it and just leave it laying there. But it's doing me more good laying here. So that's why I've done that. You don't have to worry too much about the cows. Most things they know not to eat. So we're getting down to a couple more rows here. I'm going to go empty the bucket and come back and we'll finish this a little bit. Here's your pokeweed. Again, grazing animals won't eat it. And one of the most important things, see that dog, you don't want stuff going to seed. You want to get in here and get this stuff 
if you have put it off too long like I have, it's okay as long as it doesn't go to seed. So that spiny amaranth goes to seed quickly. So we're really fighting, we really fight the spiny amaranth here. So anyway, I will go dump the bucket and come back. Just wanted to tell you about it. don't let it go to seed. So here's the, the cleared ground. I'll weed eat it real quick and then we'll tarp it. Then we'll move on to something else. I will be um, getting fodder forage for my cows for the next week or two. It's like over in the food forest there, there's a bunch of overgrowth. So I'm gonna get in there and clean it out and feed it to the cows. So we're gonna go dump this bucket. I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. So the, here's the tractor perspective on that. All that fodder from a cow. What is that, a quarter of a bale of hay maybe? I don't know. cows come over now why do this uh, I don't know maybe that's 150 pounds maybe 100 pounds but you buy off alpha cubes right you buy off alpha hay and you pay a lot for it that stuff right there has a superior nutrient profile to alpha alfalfa all of that the spiny amaranth what they pick at because they don't like it so much because of the spikes but they will pick at it. Then you got the pigweed amaranth, red root amaranth, which is, they definitely like that, but you don't want to give them too much. I've created an artificial environment over there, very high in nitrogen. So being such an accumula uh, accumulator of, of nutrients, it, it gets a, a, a lot of nitrogen in it. And it can be harmful to cattle and people Especially if you eat too much, so you don't want to give them too much of that that amaranth. Uh, then you have the ragweed; they just love it, and it has a very high um, nutrient profile. And as does lamb's quarter, it has the high protein about a similar or superior to alfalfa. So it has what you're looking for. You, you wouldn't probably want to feed nothing but that, but and. Uh, it's a good addition to their regular forage. I don't know where they're at. So I'm going to go back and finish over there and uh, I guess the cows aren't coming. So I'll, I'll talk to you later. So I was calling for the cows and they were bellowing back but they weren't coming. It's uh, already too warm for them. They're black cows. They like the cooler like Angus. They're from Scotland, Highlands. Uh, uh, Great Britain they don't like like the heat so they're back in the woods enjoying them and they're not hungry if they were hungry they'd come a running so they've had enough to eat that's great I'm glad they've had enough to eat and they're resting in the heat so I've tried putting this bucket a little lower it was a little bit of a pain to load it up that high so we'll see if this is any easier so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this little bit up and I'll wrap this segment up um, I'll show you the rest of this some other time. All right, there you have it. We got uh, half a bucket of fodder, and we put the tarp as cover as much as we could. Save that uh, volunteer tomato over there. 
looks bushy thing off to the right. Now I wanted to mention also I forgot. Um, now we chopped the top of the plant, but most plants have a root ball at least half, especially these wild plants. Pretty much you can bet on 100% of the amount of roots underneath as they have um, foliage on top. It's definitely true for trees. Like the crown of that tree would equal the root ball. And plants are similar, but even if it's 50%, let's just say it's 50% of the root mass of what is above ground. Well, we've just tarped all that stuff that pushed down through the soil, past our loose stuff, it got down into the clay subsoil, going after moisture, going after minerals. So now we've covered it and killed that plant. Now it's going to die and it's going to leave all those little passages as those roots become worm food and as they rot and all the soil life feeds on them it's going to leave ways it's loosening the soil it's working the subsoil allowing air and nutrients water to get down in there so we're actually working the subsoil by allowing the weeds to do their thing so you, if you take a holistic look at weeds, you can appreciate them a little bit more. Yeah, they're a pain in the garden, but they are doing a job. They're trying to fix the soil and bring along succession. A lot of times they're trying to bring it in, bring in a forest, which in the temperate zones, if the grass allows for it, like out in the prairie, that they won't let a tree get a root in. They're just, it's going to be grass there unless you put in highways and roads and fences and all that and then now the prairie's got trees all over because it's given a place for the trees to get a hold whereas before the buffalo would trample it all down and it would it would stay prairie so the point being is we're using what's going on with an understanding of, of what nature is trying to do the creative purpose of nature is trying to do its thing so don't hate the weeds they're very valuable tools Plants are valuable, even the poisonous ones that you don't know what to do with. They still make great compost, great. And I compost, I just throw it down and let it happen. I don't do all that work. I just try to make it a moist environment and pile it up, choke out the weeds, and it happens on its own. So composting, this is all what I've composted here. This is all hay and manure compost. And there's a little bit of wood chip stuff in there. But, and it's not perfectly balanced yet. It's going to take some time for it to balance out. It's still carbon rich, but there is nitrogen in there with all the manure. It's just, it's got to kind of equalize between all of the soil. And the soil web of life will do that for me. I don't have to get all bent out of shape. You're not going to have a whole lot of soil deficiencies if, if you stop spraying your weeds and stop tilling. Just let, let the natural cycle work and be patient. So, yeah, this is my compost bed. It's turning into better soil, but right now, that's a potato field. It doesn't look like it, but I don't spray. And we'll get in there and pull all the stuff out. But not today. This was enough for today. So, uh, I'm going to go take a shower, make sure I don't have any chiggers or ticks or whatever on me change into some more comfortable clothes because I'm going to switch gears into um, construction and during the middle of the day the mosquitoes aren't out so I put on shorts and a t-shirt and then later in the evening I go back in and change and put on long pants because the bugs the mosquitoes get out and eat me so and my clothes are soaking wet from sweat so I'm going to go dry off take a shower and we'll take a shower and then dry off cool off and then come take on this next project so if you pace yourself in this heat, you can keep working through the day. You just have to give yourself a number of various projects. And, uh, you know, don't just slave away in the heat all day in the garden. It's, it's just really probably not worth it. And pace yourself, balance it out, and you'll have a lot better day for it. Because obviously things are out of hand, but I'm just going to take it one day at a time and just make progress one step at a time. That way I can keep my, my attitude hi so anyway that's enough for that for now I'll, I'll show you my uh, off-grid meat locker here in a little bit we'll go out.